you guys. This is a big announcement today because we've been working on this for a long period of time. The, uh, I'm Jim Inhofe, and we have what we call the big four on the committee. That's myself, Barbara Boxer. The big, the big four. Big four. There we go. This is the one area where Barbara and I love each other. That's right. That's true. We get along. We don't have any disagreements. No. On Forget that. the rest of it, though. That's right. And we have a couple other uh, members that are going to be here who are the chairman and the ranking member of the subcommittees. I just want to uh, open it up by saying that we've been working for this day for a long period of time. Uh, you know, it's always hard to uh, come up with a long-term bill, and yet when you look at the things that need to be done, that you, you can't do it on short-term extensions. I keep trying to tell my conservative friends and those who want to try to say, well, we can't spend money on a, uh, on a, on a big highway bill. This is one area that we can because the alternative to a big bill in a long-term bill, six-year bill, is to have short-term fixes. Right. The cost of that is about 30% off the top. So the conservative position is that. That's my job, to talk to the, um, the conservative Republicans. And I think everyone's going to be joining in and recognize how popular this is. So we have, uh, we have a bill that has, and we'll be covering this stuff. I'm not going to say very much. The new freight program is going to be good. You know, when I think, in my state of Oklahoma, uh, a fairly small state, we have uh, $6 billion in exports that go to 25 countries worldwide. And Oklahoma's goods have to, to get to get to the port of, uh, what is it out there, Long Beach. Correct. They have to go through five states. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that is kind of an argument that we have to have no state as an island. We have to have one big unified United States uh, 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 transportation bill. Barbara? Thank you. I'm going to use my little box. You use your little box. So I can see everybody. Um, well, this is what I call a really a good day in the United States Senate. And um, I hope it starts a trend. When we cooperate, we work together, we really negotiate. Everybody's got to give up a little, and everybody has to set their priorities. This was a negotiation that wasn't easy, as you know, I'm sure. And our staffs deserve a huge amount of credit, both Jim's and mine, and also uh, Senator Carper and Vitter. Um, why do I say this is a good day? Because we're 39 days until the trust fund that funds highways and transit goes broke. This is what you call an emergency. And this committee, under the leadership of my friend, this committee has once again stepped in. We did it before, and we're doing it again. Now, there are three other committees, and both sides of the aisle on those committees have to do their part as well but we are moving forward. Um, why is it so essential? A, I told you the trust fund was going down, and we have a huge number of our states who rely on more than 50% of their highway uh, budget uh, from the trust fund. We even have one state that takes 100%, 100% from uh, the federal government. So this is essential. We have 61,300 structurally deficient bridges. That's a mouthful, structurally deficient. It means they're dangerous, and we have to step up to the plate, and we did. We have 50% of our roads in disrepair. I mean, this is not news to the American people. They know that. And the cost of that to the individual driver is, in some reports, they say it's over $1,000 because they keep wrecking their cars. This bill comes not a minute too soon um, for the millions of workers, the millions of construction workers, s many of them still unemployed from the Great Recession, and the thousands of businesses. And many of these people are behind us now. I am um, so proud to be here with my friend. And it just shows you that we can get the job done. And this action that we're going to take tomorrow is going to set the tone. I want to make one little point. Um, we will have introduced in the committee tomorrow, but not for a vote, just to lay out an even bigger vision. And I, I just want you to know that I think we need to do even more. But what a wonderful start this is. And I'm proud to be here with my colleague. Great. Thank, thank you, Barbara. And, uh, 
Well, somebody let me know when Senator Carper and Senator Vitter uh, come in, and we'll kind of interrupt this. But we do, as Barbara said, we have some really great people here that are, whose lives are directly affected by this, and, and we'd like to have a short comment uh, by each one. The first would be uh, Patricia Elizondo is the Senior Vice President of Xerox Public Sector and Transportation. Do you want, do you want the pie? Yes, the Senator, thank yeah. you very much. Yes. You're about the same. We, live yes. the work. we do big things, though. <laughs> we do. Xerox is a global leader in transportation globally and in the United States, providing related services and solutions in the transportation business. Through our electronic tolling services, our way in motion for the trucking industry, through our smart parking, transit and open fare systems, and public safety solutions, we help make lives of people in transportation better every day. But this is difficult with the right, without the right investments to help these solutions and services progress with the times. This legislation is a big step in the right direction with giving the state authorities the right and ability to make long-term plans and more importantly investments to help bring our infrastructure into a place that's not only more safe, but really with services and solutions for its constituents that are more in line with the 21st century. Good work. Thank you so much. Good job. Next, uh, Brett Lieberman, Vice President of CNH Industrial. Good morning, and first, <clears throat> Chairman Inhofe and Ranking Member Boxer, thank you for this opportunity. As you said, Congress must act and move a fully funded six-year surface transportation authorization before the end of this year, and extensions are not a substitute for action. CNH Industrial is certainly eager to see more of our case construction and our New Holland construction equipment hard at work. As you know, without a six-year bill, Governments and contractors cannot make long-term plans. When this happens, contractors do not buy equipment. And when contractors don't buy equipment, our plants don't work as much. We've got about three rows of plant managers here uh, from CNH Industrial, and we'll be hitting the hill tomorrow to talk about this issue and the importance that it is for us as an organization. Uh, when the contractors from AGC and ARPA don't buy equipment, we slow down, which isn't good for anybody. Additionally, as a manufacturer, we need roads to be competitive, and a functioning transportation network is critical for us to bring materials into our plants and to ship our product out to markets here in the U.S. as well as markets abroad. We appreciate the steps that Chairman Inhofe and Ranking Member Boxer have taken to introduce this bipartisan transportation bill. They recognize that a more sustained and focused effort is needed to help reverse the troubling declines in infrastructure investments that have been well documented by the National Association of Manufacturers and other groups that are here today. The NAM study, Catching Up, found that capital spending on infrastructure is on the decline and decreased by 10.5% in real dollars between 2003 and 2012. Chairman Inhofe and Ranking Member Boxer are sending an important message that Democrats and Republicans can work together to help reverse these troubling trends. Allowing our nation's infrastructure base to continue to erode is not an option for this committee. They recognize that the United States is falling behind in its, on its infrastructure obligations and ceding important gains to our competitors around the world. Manufacturers will work with you to ensure that our colleagues in the Senate and in the House see it the same way. The longer Congress delays in making the investments necessary for our highways, roads, and bridges, the more difficult and expensive it will be for our nation to fund this critical and necessary endeavor. So in closing, let's get this bill done. And finally, thank you for this opportunity. Thank Good you. work. Well, the subcommittee involved is uh, chaired by Senator Vitter and the ranking member is Tom Carper. And uh, we'll hear from them. Thank you very much. It's great to be here with Jim and Barbara and Tom and all of these supporters of a strong 
six-year highway and transportation bill. I strongly, strongly support that. I'm delighted that the full committee will be reporting out such a bill this week. And I've been joining all of these others to push it as a priority for the entire Senate, because if it's a priority, we can get it done and we can pay for it right now and we can pass a six-year bill. That would be a major step to move the economy forward. That would be a major step showing that the Senate is working in a constructive and bipartisan way. Uh, it's achievable, unlike, in my opinion, some, some other uh, goals, broad-based tax reform I fully support, but I don't think has really any chance of happening this year. This six-year bill can happen this year, and certainly I've joined with all of these other members in pushing it as a strong, positive priority right now in this Senate and this Congress. And I'm uh, going to keep pushing so we get that done. It's going to start this week in our committee as we report out the transportation policy aspects of a good, strong six-year bill. Tom? Thank you, David. Uh, Barbara, Jim, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning and welcome. Uh, it's great to be with, uh, with all of you. I apologize for being a little late. We're uh, in this building, but another hearing room uh, looking at a proposal involving uh, regulations, when to review our existing regulations, when to get rid of some, when to update others. The, uh, that's part of the nurturing environment. The, our regulatory structure in this country is part of the regulatory structure that uh, helps pro provide a, a nurturing environment for job creation and job preservation. Uh, we need regulations. Uh, we also need uh, common sense regulations. We also need, uh, in this country, we're going to have a strong and vibrant economy. We need um, access to capital. Uh, our employers need a, uh, a world-class workforce, at least a, a workforce that has the skills, possesses the skills uh, that are needed in the, uh, the, the workplace. We need um, public safety. We need uh, rule of law. Uh, we need um, public health. We need a good health system, ability to provide health care to people in a cost-effective way. We need a clean environment, clean air and clean water. Uh, we also need a uh, transportation system that gets us as human beings and the, uh, the products and the goods that we create or manufacture where they need to go when they need to go. Last week I met with a, uh, uh, a manufacturing uh, group of, of companies that are involved in uh, manufacturing things that go into clean products. And they, uh, some are chemicals, uh, some companies, but other, a, a variety. And one, uh, one representative, one company said this to me, he said, a lot of what we create and uh, manufacture in this country, we export. And we export it by ship. And he said, these ships coming in and out of par uh, harbors uh, for a very short period of time, because that's just downtime. They don't make any money when they're sitting in a harbor. And he said, if, uh, if we miss a window, maybe a four-hour window of getting our product to a harbor, loaded on a ship, that ship will be gone. And we'll have missed that opportunity to ship out our product and to make money from that product. It's inefficient, grossly inefficient. And that's just one example. And there are examples of probably everybody in the office and the audience here can, can give us. I'm going to give you a, uh, one other statistic that I think is pretty, pretty important for today. The McKinsey Global Institute recently reported that making a major uh, effort, repair and improve our, our roads, highways, bridges, and transit systems could add about 1.5% to our annual GDP growth and create at least 1.8 million jobs. A lot of times we think of the jobs, building construction, trade, trade jobs that can be created by putting people to work, hundreds of thousands of people to work, building roads, highways, bridges, and transit systems. That's all really important. But the other thing that's uh, even more important is, uh, or just as important, is the creation of the, by having a more effective, efficient transportation system, we significantly grow our GDP. I'll close with this. I serve on the Finance Committee as, as well as on, on this committee. I love serving on them both. I love serving with Barbara and Jim and David and, and our colleagues. Um, I, uh, this is not original, but I think it's a really good analogy. Let's say we, uh, we want to take a, a family trip. Uh, let's say we want to take a trip across the country. Uh, let's say we decide to, we don't want to put it, our minivan in our old, old minivan with 396,000 miles on the trip, but we rent one. We rent one, and we rent a good-looking van. And uh, maybe we buy a new one. And uh, we start our trip with our family across the country, from Delaware to Danville, California. And, uh, you know, we side this, we, but, but there's a, one, we have a credit card to get the gas, but the problem with the credit card is we can only put like $5 on it at a time. 
and then we have to drive to the next, the next uh, gas station. We're limited five dollars more of gas, and we do that all the way across the country. And instead of being able to drive across the country, maybe three days, it's four or five days. It's wasteful in time. It's hugely wasteful in a lot of other ways as well. And I would just say, as important as the legislation is that we're introducing today, and I'm thrilled to be a part of this and grateful to my colleagues for uh, giving me a chance, my staff a chance to participate. The other thing that's important is we have the ability to fill up the tank of this beautiful vehicle that uh, is uh, represented in, in this legislation. And that we can make this trip a whole lot faster and a whole lot smoother, and by doing that to really drive this economy, drive this economy, which is what we need to do. For everybody here that's a part of getting this done, this is an all, all hand, an old Navy term, all, all hands on deck. We need your help, and with your help, we'll get it done. Let's drive. All, right. all hands on deck, that that's, comes from a Navy guy. Um, what we're gonna do is hear from the rest of these individuals here and then open it up to questions. Um, we have um, Brett Lieberman, Vice President of, uh, so we did that. No, we didn't either. Yeah, we did, we did, we got that. Jack Howard, all right, Jack Howard, with the oh, U.S. Chamber. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Glad to be here. Uh, Ranking Member uh, Boxer and members of the Senate Envir Environment and Public Works Committee for your leadership uh, on this issue. Uh, we particularly appreciate you getting more of your colleagues to believe in the importance of a well-functioning transportation system. I'm here today representing the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this is a top priority for us, and we're delighted to put the full weight of the chamber behind this proposal. Uh, we believe strongly that federal investment in highways, public transportation, and safety is necessary to boost economic pro productivity, successfully compete in the global economy, and maintain a high quality of life. Kicking the can has its costs, as the chairman indicated earlier, uh, and we're all paying a heavy price uh, for that. Companies can't plan for hiring or capital expenditures. Land, labor, and capital are more expensive as the time value of money increases, project costs, projects that need multi-year funding and commitments are delayed, and opportunities for economic development and economic growth are lost. The Chamber applauds the introduction of the, <coughs> of the DRIVE Act. It furthers the policy and programmatic reforms of MAP 21. It provides some long-term certainty that frankly is long overdue. Now leaders of both parties must come together on a shared solution to the HTF structural deficiencies as soon as possible. Congress must ensure that maximum consideration is given to a sustainable rev revenue solution so that if another extension is unavoidable, it will be the last extension. The Chamber commends the Committee on the important first step of marking up a multi-year surface transportation authorization bill. We look forward to working with all members of Congress on a comprehensive bipartisan proposal which builds on the reform success of MAP 21, stabilizes the Highway Trust Fund, and finds ways to grow investment in transit, roads, bridges, so each state and region can get out of the system what they need to be successful. So thank you very much. We're delighted to be here. And I think I'm turning it over now to Pete Ruane uh, with the American Road and Transportation Builders Association. The nice thing about this is Pete won't be harassing us every day now. <laughs> Twice a day. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, the leadership of the Senate Environment Public Works Committee has once again, once again demonstrated improving the nation's transportation network and strengthening the U.S. economy is an area where the two parties can come together for the good of the American people. At a time when cynicism about our public sector institutions is at unprecedented levels, today's introduction of the DRIVE Act is also a powerful signal that some in Washington are focused on delivering the mail and, in, and every other product that American citizens and business need on a daily basis. Chairman Inhofe, Senator Boxer, Senator Vitter, Carter, Carper, excuse me, he's gone. <laughs> no, he's still around. <laughs> they all have our deep appreciation and toward, you know, this important step toward enactment of a long-term surface transportation authorization bill. 
Once again, you are leading by action, not words. Lastly, today should be a wake-up call for all members of Congress that it is time to stop letting perceived obstacles to fixing the Highway Trust Fund rule the day. With the introduction of the Drive Act, Chairman Inhofe, Senator Boxer, Senators Vitter, and Carper have shown us, have shown us that we need to focus on what we can achieve, not just what it costs. We're going to get it done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and uh, all the senators for their good work here. Uh, everything that needs to be said has been said. And in Washington, we repeat everything that has been said. But I, I want to just, uh, I caught an audible on myself while I was standing up here. And I want to echo the, the remarks that Pete made. Um, you know, the last two Congresses, Senator Boxer did a terrific job of building bipartisan support for moving infrastructure legislation. She listened to her own caucus. She worked with the Republicans, worked across the aisle, found out what they needed to get to get legis needed to have to get legislation passed. And I think she set a terrific tone for demonstrating how to get things done. And Senator Inhofe and his colleagues um, have have picked up that mantle and they're running with it, and we appreciate that. Uh, we're delighted to see a six-year bill. Uh, we've got a uh, our members are extremely frustrated with the inaction that has occurred over the last few years, with not being able to plan, without being able uh, to buy equipment, invest in equipment, with not being able to invest in their workforce, not knowing whether there's going to be any more uh, projects to, that will be out for, uh, for bid letting. Uh, so this is a great step forward. We recognize there's an uphill climb. We recognize that we've got to find the money uh, to get this done. Uh, but with the leadership they've demonstrated today, we're clearly on the right path. Thanks very much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, uh, Ranking Member Boxer and, um, and uh, Senators Vitter and Carper. On behalf of the highway users, and our members include the AAA clubs, trucking and bus companies, motorcyclists and RVers, and uh, companies with fleets of vehicles. I just want to thank you for the opportunity to have the users here to speak about this bill. Um, you know, it, this is about the economy, this is about jobs, but at the end of the day, this is about the people that are out there on the roads, that are stuck in traffic, that are dealing with unsafe bridges and unsafe uh, roadways. So what, we're, what we need to remember here is that this is a bill and it's great that this is a bipartisan bill because it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how rich or poor you are, it doesn't matter whether you live in an urban area or a rural area of the country, this is a bill that is important to you. Whether you drive or whether you don't drive and you just are relying on the shipment to come from UPS and the mail on time, this is a bill that's important to you. Why do we have the federal government involved in highways? You know. This bill is a perfect example why. It's a focus on the freight of our country. It's a focus on the national highway system. It's a focus on public safety and bridges. You can't do that without the federal government. You can't do the big projects without the involvement of the federal government. So I just want to endorse the $2 billion freight program that you've put into this bill each year, um, the National Highway Performance Program, and uh, just close with where I started and saying this bill is about people not just about statistics. So thanks yeah, very much. You're right. Hey, thank you, Greg. Uh, the next to the last one, I got a couple of Okies for you. Uh, Gary Ridley has been a witness more than anyone else, probably in the history of this, of this committee. Uh, he is uh, arguably one of the most knowledgeable, maybe the most knowledgeable person on transportation. He was our Secretary of Transportation in Oklahoma and has, has had every position. Ironically, he and I both came to the state at the same time. So, Gary, keep it short. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member. This is, this is really a great day, not just for the people that stand here, and certainly not for the Congress uh, of the United States, but as was mentioned, for the people of the United States. 
it is important to understand, I think, that Congress and the federal government has an obligation and a responsibility to help provide for the national transportation system. It's important that people know that Congress is working well under the leadership of, of our senior senator in Oklahoma, Senator Inhofe. People talk about the money that is spent in, in this piece of legislation for this long-term bill. This is not money that's spent. This is investment that is being made. This is investment to our future. And I would put it to you that this is not money that would ever be spent. This is money that will make money for the people of this country. This investment that is being made today is similar to the investment that was made in 56 under the Eisenhower administration when we built the interstate system. The interstate system did not cost us anything. I put it to you that the interstate system has made money over and over again for the people that use it, for the people that use it for business, for the people that use it for the development along the routes. This program that Senator Inhofe and Ranking Member Boxer have put together is by far a, in my career with the department, is far reaching. It allows us to, uh, to address the serious problem of freight movements and the congestion that is caused in a lot of areas. This is a focal point of the federal government and is extremely important for everyone. So congratulations, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member and members of the committee. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Senator, my name is Dewey Bartlett. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Well, I come here representing not only the great city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, but also a uh, organization that I'm a very active member in, the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Yesterday, they held their annual business meeting, enacting new policies, and they have come four square in support of this legislation. Our position is threefold. Mayors need a long-term renewal. As you know, we have a variety of master plans, transportation planning that we are always tweaking and adjusting. It takes a lot of time because what we're trying to do is coordinate efficiently the movement of people and personnel and commerce in all major forms and all minor forms of transportation and emerging forms of transportation. Besides vehicular barge traffic, air traffic, et cetera, rail traffic, we're also trying to conform to the new changes in our society, bicycling, walking, running. They're all forms of transportation now and we must work them together for they all are utilized. Secondly, we also want to make certain that we are given additional resources, not only money, but also the ability to avoid a consistent amount of red tape that costs a lot of money. Duplicative and unnecessary regulations get in the way and they also are a very, very costly uh, requirement today. And thirdly, the commitment that we see is long-term. That long-term commitment is very, very good for all of us. It's good for the capital markets It gives per, and it provides a knowing opportunity of what is going to happen. We are at a point where this inaction that we have seen, it hurts our economy and it undermines progress. If we do not maintain and improve our existing infrastructure systems, our ability to compete in this world is damaged irreparably in some cases. We must be able to competitively move all of the people and all the commerce that we need in our, in our, for our economies to work and for them to intersect and, and do this efficiently. In my particular city, Tulsa, Oklahoma, the major largest industries we have, energy, aviation, aerospace, manufacturing, they must depend, and they do depend, on efficient access to all forms of reasonably priced transportation. Without it, we have a problem. Well, I can assure you that we, the mayors of this great nation, are here to support very strongly, not only by waving the flag today, but by appearing at the editorial boards, by appearing at the neighborhood meetings, by writing letters and whatever is necessary, Senators, that we can make certain that this passes. I thank you from the bottom of our collective hearts 
because of the commitment you've had. Senator, great to see you all. All right, you guys, this is a big deal because you know this and the defense authorization bills are the two most important bills all year. So we will open this up to questions. Anyone you want to ask, uh, uh, open it up. Yes. Well, we will be increasing. First of all, this this is going to be about ninety billion more over a six-year period than the proceeds of the Highway Trust Fund. So you're talking about three hundred and fifteen or so. But the important thing is, it's an increase over the last times of three percent a year for a six-year period. Well, the Finance Committee is working on that, and uh, that isn't our job to do that, and they are working on that as we speak. If, if I could Well, add we have one member who's well, on the Finance Committee. Let me just add and turn it over to Tom. Um, as you know, each committee has its own jurisdiction. Our jurisdiction is to lay down what it is this country needs in order to move our people and our goods and our services. And if we don't do that, we wind up losing money. So I just wanted to echo what a couple of people said here. This is an investment. I think it was Gary who said this. This is an investment that comes back to us over and over again. In terms of the way to pay for it, I just wanted to throw out that the Democrats in our conference have said international tax reform. They think that will give us more than enough. For me, I've put out 10 different ways to pay for it. I'll be glad to share that with you. Let me just add to what uh, Senator Boxer uh, said. There are maybe three, uh, three possible uh, uh, roads for us to take here. One of those would be to continue to finance, as opposed to fund, the construction of uh, transportation systems. How do we finance? We saw the Treasury securities. Uh, are folks around the world willing to buy them? Yes, among them China. And uh, so that we can uh, sell our treasury securities to China. And when they try to push other nations around in the uh, South China Sea, or when they try to manipulate their currency, or they're trying to do things, uh, dumping their uh, goods and services in this country, and we say, you can't do that. And uh, for them, it's easy to say, well, I th thought you wanted uh, us to lend you some money. Uh, and uh, we don't want to be in that situ situation. So financing, we've done a lot of that. I don't think that's a very good option. And number two, is, as, 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 as Senator Boxer said, the administration has come forward, and it's actually an idea similar to what Dave Camp, the uh, last uh, chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, we got about $2 trillion in uh, profits of American companies parked overseas, not coming home. Some's being invested overseas, but they're just waiting. Maybe they're waiting for repatriation at a lower, uh, uh, lower rate. And what David Camp proposed is that that money be deemed, the president proposed that that money be deemed repatriated. I think Dave Camp would have a tax at maybe 9% rate, the president 14%. And the president's proposal, which he put out last year, didn't get a lot of attention, a lot of uh, airtime, but I think he's starting to get more serious consideration, that, that that would provide more than enough money, not just to, to do a bare minimum, what we're talking about here, but a lot more money, not just roads, highways, bridges, transit, but also uh, inner city passenger rail and some other transportation media as well. So that's a, a, se a second option. Third option, if, if we don't do one or two, and the idea of doing nothing is not a good option. And for years, we've used user fees. We've used user fees to, uh, to construct uh, roads, highways, bridges, and transit systems across the, uh, the, the country. We've not increased the major user fees for, what, 22, 22 years? They're not worth what they used to be. And meanwhile, as we know, the cost of uh, building these babies keeps going up. I'll say this. People, a lot of folks are concerned that they can't vote for increases in user fees and, um, and still, like, get reelected or get elected. Let me just share with this one quick tidbit, and I'll stop. Last year, uh, about a half dozen states across the country decided that they're going to invest in their roads, highways, bridges, and transit systems. And they decided they're going to do it by raising user fees. In those half dozen or so states, 95% of the Republicans who voted to do that won their primaries, they won their general elections, they were reelected. In those states, those half dozen or so states, the Democrats who voted to do so, to raise their user fees in their states to invest in transportation, they won their primaries, they won the general elections, they were reelected as well. Don't tell me you can't do the right thing and, uh, and get, uh, get elected and reelected. We can, and the states are showing us that. Jim, why don't you come here so you can call me? No, no. I want you to answer the questions. That's why I want you to come over. Mm -hmm.
ahead. Well, let me, let me just say, you're forgetting something. We also did a two-year bill, and we acted first, and that forced the hand of the Finance Committee a couple of years back, and they came up with the funding. So let's not forget history. Now, we know, because of this coalition behind us, it's not about us. We're showing that Republicans and Democrats care about this, but look at this coalition. I, haven't, I didn't see the AFL-CIO here, but they are standing hand in hand with the chamber on this one. So the reason I'm optimistic is because there's you know, 10 different ways to, to solve this problem, and uh, it can be done. And I think the pressure is mounting on Republicans and Democrats alike because of the situation. You know, one of my colleagues back here whispered in my ear and said, she just came back from Asia. They fund their transportation in, through a 25-year look. 25 years. Now, this is our competition. So I think if you have a heartbeat and a pulse, you understand this needs to be done. And that's why I'm optimistic, and that's why we're stepping out. I'm so proud to be here with Jim Inhofe. You know, he and I are the yin and the yang on a lot of other things. But on this subject, he, as a leading conservative, and me, as a leading liberal or progressive, we see this the same way. It has to be done. It's actually called for in the Constitution, as my friend will eloquently point out. And to me, it is essential to this economy and to the health of our businesses and our workers. You know, I think uh, when you ask that question, you uh, forget some of, uh, take it back even further in history. When I first came to the House, I was on the T&I committee over there. Our biggest problem that we had with the Highway Trust Fund is we had too much surplus. Now, we all know right. what has happened to that. That's not a problem anymore. But the 27-month bill pointed out very, very clearly to me and to everyone else that when this, this House and Senate start doing the proper thing and prioritizing, they, uh, this jumps way out in front, and that's what happened on the 27-month <laughs> bill. It's going to happen again on this one. I have no doubt about it. I agree. Anything else? Yes, yes. Well, on the Republican side, yes, we have. Uh, Mitch McConnell is anxious to get it out. Uh, he's going to be putting it out in conjunction with other bills that are there, and it's, uh, and it's going to be very, you know, it's going to be very soon. But I can't tell you exactly when that's his decision, uh, not ours. And I will say, from the Democratic point of view, we're going to be very cooperative on this. And I myself have talked to. Uh, every leader on our side, and I have talked to Mitch McConnell's staff, and I'm very encouraged. It's, it's just such an obvious thing we need to do. So I think you're going to see cooperation. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, because Barbara has uh, a lot of things I had to really sell to her, and she had to swallow hard, and I had to do the same thing. But a lot of the streamlining that's out there, you talk to any of these guys that are here involved in in construction, they'll say that we need to knock those down so that we can get more done and not have all the obstacles, whether it's endangered species, whether it's anything else. Uh, we want to get the stuff done and get it done now. And so, just so that I can say, uh, yes, we both emerged from this a little bit bruised and battered, but the fact is, um, <laughs> I feel what we were able to do on streamlining is acceptable at the end of the day, very tough, hard, but I think there's a reason to do it. And plus, I have to say, my colleague had to deal with some things he didn't like to either, which is that alternative projects are still in there. They're robust. So yeah, we, we both got a little hurt. But we knew, and we, by the way, had kind of a dramatic moment. I think it was Thursday, and thought, oh my god, will this actually fall apart? Well, we that were, always happens, though. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, we, but we did it. And I think you know, it's, the conversation was something like, well, you know, I don't know that we're going to have a bill. And, and of course, Jim said, you know, you may be right. We may have to just all walk away. And I said, let's not walk away. We can do it. We'll work all weekend. And again, I want to praise our staff. They know who they are. Yeah, we're not, we're not we, above theatrics we, around here. We love our staff because they knew they had to get it done, and they did get it done. Oh, you sure? Join Jim, come here. 
He left. He left. Bitter went. Don't worry, we won't taint you too much. Yeah, the, I think the, uh, the, the, lection, the lesson from the elections last November were really threefold. The one, people want us to work together, like these two people are working together. Number two, they want us to get things done. And number three, they want us to get things done that actually strengthen mm -hmm. our economic recovery. And uh, we're working together, trying to get things done, and in a way that'll strengthen our economy. Last night, my wife said to me, when I got home from, uh, from Washington, I got home to Delaware, she said, we're talking about trade legislation, we're talking about transportation legislation, she said, stop talking, do something. Oh, good. We're, we're past talking, we're gonna do something. That's and, then, good. and then she said, let's drive. Okay, let's drive. Let's okay. drive. Okay. All right, you guys. Ready? Thank you very much for uh, for coming, That's and we're going to get to work. Okay. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job.